There's no secret, there's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent, be still, and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't gonna happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health, Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world. I am Jay Campbell, and of course, you're watching the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my StreamYard virtual studio with Leslie Kenny, all the way across the pond. How are you, Leslie? I'm doing really well. Great to see you, Jay. It's awesome to see you. So I met Leslie in person in December of 2023, which is, dude, almost three months ago now, uh, at A4M. And she has an amazing supplement that we'll be talking about at various points and times in this show, which is a very high-potency spermidine product, which I've been using uh, for the last, actually, literally, I think, since you sent it to us, which was like six weeks ago. I've been using it every day. I take three capsules. (laughs) As Ed instructed in the morning, Good. Uh, but just for you guys uh, to get a little bit of her bio, she is an Oxford-based entrepreneur, born in California. We won't hold that against her. And a graduate <laughs> of Berkeley and Harvard Business School. You might have heard of that before. In her 30s, <laughs> she was diagnosed with lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, and Hashimoto's. And while embracing a holistic health practice and launching Oxford Healthsman, which is, again, this product, Spermidine, uh, in As a supplement, at age 58, Leslie has reversed her autoimmune conditions and has a glycan age, biological age of only 21 years old, and she is living proof that we can get better with age. So Leslie, it's awesome to have you here today. Now, I want to ask you, as I always do on the Jay Campbell podcast nowadays, because we are in precarious times, uh, where are you on the timeline of humanity? Are you a buyer long on humanity are you a seller short on current condition of humanity (laughs) i'm a i'm a buyer long because i choose not to hear everything that is broadcast um there's so much negativity out there and it's just clickbait in my opinion try to focus on the positive there's even a news outlet here in great britain called positive news and i just feel like um (laughs) I don't think we are as doomed as everyone says, but I think that makes a great story, right, for the purveyors of news. So I I just am looking for the good stuff. And to be honest, there's so much to be optimistic about. At no other time in human history have we been able to unearth so much information about ways to slow the aging process and avoid the diseases of aging. And these are things that we can do without a permission slip from our doctor that we can actually do ourselves. And I think more and more people are embracing personal responsibility, understanding that they have a power, that their body has an innate wisdom into which they can tap, that they can support with the right lifestyle um, and biohacking hacks uh, to allow that wisdom to make the body young and stay young for longer. Yeah. I mean, I agree with all that. And I'm a hundred percent in, in the same camp as you. I mean, we're, we're actually right now, um, from a, you know, a, ho- a holistic perspective of analyzing human history, at least the known part of human history. Cause I believe there's been multiple epics, um, where we're in the greatest expansion ever. I mean, you know, biomedically, technologically, there's so much going on, um, that can expand. I mean, you know, I get every day inundated with people sending me gadgets and technology that, you know, enhances lifespan, uh, measures lifespan, you know, gives you the ability to understand like what's going on, you know, cellularly. I mean, so yes, I mean, we're definitely in a new quote unquote golden age, but obviously, as you said, you know, the narrative of the mainstream news and all that stuff is obviously negative and it's always been negative. And so it's, you know, it comes down to the individual to choose what information they're going to consume. And it's like, I tell people all the time, it's very, very simple. You can either be a, be a creator, which is of this world, or you can be a consumer, I'm sorry, a creator, which is in this world or a consumer, which is of this world. Right. So it's, 
it comes down to whether or not you're consumptive or you're creative. And if you're creative, you have an absolutely amazing life and you're, you know, really on top of it and you're building and creating and engaging and obviously other like-minded people. But if you're consuming, you also attract that because as you know, everything is energy. And this yeah. is just an energetic, yeah. we're living in an energetic world. That's a very Eastern, it's a very Eastern view. And I think that the more people fear, the more easily manipulated they are. And that is, that's why I choose to look for the good because I want to stay in control. I want to be proactive. Uh, and I just keep looking for those ways in which I can be. So yeah. as I said, there's so much more that we can do. I've got my own, I've got my CGM on right now. My aura <laughs> ring is charging up, awesome. but you know, I can look and see, and you know, you can tell that it, eating an orange has less of a glucose spike than say eating a bunch of pretzels. This is interesting. <laughs> These are things that, you know, information you can use to change the way you live and hopefully at a better glycan age like I did, which was, it was a little bit surreal to get that glycan age, especially when Halle Berry got 40 when she's 57. So she's a year younger than I am. That was really, awesome. that was weird. That was well, very I mean, strange. Well, meeting, you in, meeting uh. you in person, you know, you have great energy. And again, it's like I said, you know, aging is a mindset. You know, we're really only as old as we characterize ourselves. And if you don't ever talk about being older or getting older or again, attaching, you know, diagnostic diagnostic symptoms to whatever it is that you have yeah. right you oh. walk into a room all the time and say oh my sciatica you know what i mean <laughs> or like yeah. you know whatever it is but i mean again if 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 we are nothing more than literally vibrating particles and oscillating waves or we're energy then at the end of the day like don't have a mindset you know energy meaning thought waves like you can't have a mindset that you're negative or that you're hurt or that you're injured or that you're getting older Your mindset is I'm viral, I'm optimized, you know, I'm yeah. healthy, whole and complete and I desire. And then, you know, I take it, you know, the great Neville Goddard always says, imagine your life is the wish fulfilled. Right. So it's like, if, like you're, if, if you're, if you're moving through life, having, being, doing the things that you ultimately desire, your life is going to be abundant. Your life yeah. is going to be prosperous. That's the, what you're going to generate. And that's the people that you're going to run into and experience life with. It just, it, again, it's, it's, you know, again, I know keep going back to Tesla, I mean, uh, energy and frequency, but you know, Tesla said that thing, said that too, you know, that everything is vibrating. And so when we are vibrating, if we're vibrating in a resonant field, then we're obviously going to attract, you know, more people of resonant like mind. So that's just, that's just the way it is. So, I mean, it goes back to the original question I asked you, if you resonate with your life, you're going to live in a quote unquote resonant age or a resonant experience because that's all you can create. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I'm always looking for the wins. You know, it's uh, something Dan Sullivan talks about yep. every day. Just yep. think of those three wins. There's always something, right? That's awesome. Dan Sullivan, yeah. that's very cool that you talk about him. All right, so let's get into <laughs> the meat and potatoes. So first talking point is autophagy and you know we can talk about anything as it is to like you know delaying aging and uh i love the word now age regression you know people don't like to use that word anti-aging you gotta age, <laughs> yeah. age right? or pro pro aging right pro aging yeah. i mean i just kind of like that i like <laughs> saying age regression though because like obviously aging chronologically versus aging biologically are two separate things yeah both of us are you know working very different i would say str you know striving uh, ardently to, um, to slow down the way our cells age. And obviously there's a lot of ways to do that, but you know, autophagy is something that both of us like talking about because we're both into fasting and we're both into using mitochondrial optimization and all that stuff. But you can, can you kind of just talk a little bit about autophagy? Sure. So, uh, for those who don't know what autophagy is, that's just a Greek word that means self eating. So just think of it as the, um, the self cleaning button on your oven, right? Um, that you press it and basically it bags up all of the trash and burns it. And that's why when we fast, the body's actually looking for energy. And when we burn that trash, we create energy in the process. Now, uh, autophagy is also very important for certain parts of the body, like the cardiac cells. They don't actually, there's not a, a cardiovascular equivalent of BDNF or brain derived nootrophic factor to create new neurons in the brain. We don't have those for the for the heart. And as a result, 
the best way to keep the heart in shape is to think of those heart cells as little vintage cars that we've got to constantly polish and maintain. And how do you do that? With this autophagy or cell renewal process. Um, so that's, you know, that's, it's important for so many aspects for every single cell in the body. But as I mentioned, for, for cells like uh, heart cells that don't replace themselves, you can't grow new ones so easily, like you can with, say, your brain or other parts of the body. It's super important for maintenance. And um, it also has an impact on stem cells. It has an impact on mitochondria because you do want um, to keep those young and, uh, and in good shape as well. So you have good energy production with strong and healthy mitochondria, and you have stem cells to help you with repair. That's just one way to do it. Um, I've been really lucky in that um, Professor Yoshinori Osumi, who's the 2016 Nobel Prize winner uh, for his research on autophagy, is an advisor to um, the Japan Autophagy Consortium. We're the only non-Japanese company that's part of that consortium. So I've actually got to, I've got to meet him, got to present some questions to him. Very cool. And um, been able to present to him, which was kind of weird as well, because I'm not a scientist. Right. I'm just a scientist. Well, actually, you told me, in, I got to bring it up. You're actually yeah. like our friend Susan, who I've become very fond of, and so is my wife. I love which, Susan. Um, yeah, that both of you guys are sex, quote unquote, sexologists. So, I mean, yeah. like that's... That's something to, to, to truly, in my opinion, brag about, because obviously the world that we live in is like, you know, depending on what spiritual or religious connotation you come from, there's so much repression. Yeah, yeah true, like, true. And Susan crazy. has been badly censored and there's no reason to censor her. So sex is completely natural and actually it yeah. helps with longevity, right? I mean, you're increasing oxytocin, serotonin, dopamine, so many great neurotransmitters. I've heard, but I have never found any scientific literature to prove this, that it actually helps with autophagy too, for women. Yeah. Um, with men, you would need to practice seminal retention in order right. to get that benefit. So I forgot that, that, you, that you knew about that. That's really funny. Yeah. Oh, no, I talk about that kind of stuff all the time. I've had Susan <laughs> on my podcast four times. I mean, I've actually said... I mean, we're talking about a lot of different things in the background, but um, I, she's one of the smartest women that I've ever spoken to when it comes to hormone optimization, like for women, no, you know, so that's a big bugaboo for me because I have like literally thousands of women uh, in my ecosystem that are desperate, you know, to get their hormones optimized and to get proper treatment protocols and patterns and all that stuff. And it's just a crapshoot, you know, yeah. even the best female physicians, you know, in North America are all disagreeing over what's the right way, you know, yeah. it's pretty cookie cutter and templatized nowadays with men on how to hormone optimize. Right. Like we know what the best delivery systems are. We know what the, the methods, we know that yep. usually the dosages, but with women, the very, very unique, you know, obviously the biological uniqueness and the N of one aspect of women is like all over the board. So it's, it's really basically difficult to give like, you know, carte blanche ex explanations or advice, or again, like I say, templatized protocols yeah. for women on how to optimize their hormones. But Susan, yeah who's 63, correct me if I'm wrong now, and she's is 63. obviously, a, yeah, she's either 62 or 63. She's a pretty hot 63. She's hot. Uh, I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, look, the reality is, is that when she yeah, was still in America, she still menstruates, right? Yeah, so she's like, yeah. So she's doing all of these amazing things, which proves that you can hack biology yeah. and that women can be fertile and, and you know, again, yeah. possess the divine feminine energy yeah. and grace and all yeah. that stuff yeah. way later yeah. than it has to be. But yeah. you have to have obviously an intimate, intricate knowledge of anatomy, physiology, you know, molecular biology. I mean, there's a lot of things that go on to do this. And when she was explaining to me what she was doing, I was like, yeah. And you need some great doctors. So <laughs> yeah. Dr. Robin Benson is one of her physicians. Dr. Jeffrey Gross in Vegas is one of her physicians. I know Jeff. And I you, know Jeff really well. Yeah. 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 And yeah. so they are they, both and fantastic. One, Bob Morgan. Is it Morgan Hunt? I don't know. What is I haven't what? met Morgan, but I've I've met uh, I've met Robin and I've met Jeff. And Jeff is Jeff is also a, a Cal Berkeley alum. So yeah, we Jeff, have right, bonded please. on our he's a little bit younger than I am, but we have bonded on <laughs> No, Jeff and I are buddies. He's yeah. Cool. What is great though is that there are these doctors out there who can help yeah. us. 
And yeah. if you if you want to have that optimization, you can. Plus, having something like a CGM yeah, and yeah, having yeah. the Aura Ring, you know, with these yeah. wearables, we can say, "Look, Doc, I actually have evidence here. Yeah, my sleep is not good. I think you're giving me some progesterone, but it's not enough. Give me right. more, please." And then right. they up you and you can use both the data from your wearables as right. well as your urine panel results and you know the qualitative data that you give to them about how you feel in your body give that to the doctor and then the doctor says right that justifies moving from say 100 milligrams of progesterone up to 150 milligrams which is actually the european norm uh is a little bit more well, while we're talking about this, because obviously I knew you would go deeper on this, like it's interesting to find out now that women that such as yourself and Susan and other doctors that are educated in this now, they yeah. the problem that we have is that the laboratory ranges yeah. are not designed for no. men or women who are hormonally optimizing no. themselves. Yeah, it's, it's a joke. So, it's a real joke. It's a total joke. And, and, yeah. and, and I'm glad we're talking about this. And I see, I told you we were going to go a whole different place. <laughs> this, is, this is brilliant stuff. I mean, this yeah. is must listen to YouTube because here's the problem that we can unpack this is you have all these physicians. And look, we can't blame the physicians, right? Because at the end of the day, and, and all the smart doctors will tell us this. And, and yeah. you know, a lot of them are your friends and my friends. And they'll be like, hey, man, it ain't your medical license. Yeah. And we are still governed by state medical licensing boards and they are looking at the lab ranges. Yeah, of course. So it's a sham, the dichotomy of like, okay, we want men and women to feel optimal. We want them to feel amazing and yeah. feel younger and you yeah. know, again, rushing, regressing their cellular and biological age markers. But at the same time, we can't actually recommend that they take dosages at yeah. the levels necessary to yeah. push them outside of these ranges. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas you and I know that it has to be to yeah. feel good. Yeah. Actually, do you know about Sweden? Because in Sweden, apparently the men's reference ranges for testosterone are based on uh, military recruits in their very 20s. Cool. That's very, very cool. cool, right? Because yeah. do you I did not want... Know that, by the way. Yeah. So do you really want to feel like every other 60 year old man it's crazy with a muffin top and some right. you know and some some man boobs not really yeah. right and for us yeah. women do we want to feel like other postmenopausal women right. again with the muffin top and right. with a the woman, brain fog right. hysterectalize yes I, oh so many so many have I had mean, this look, experience it, it kind of boggles the mind you say that because i didn't know that about that but that's cool but here's the problem with even that like i mean you know what does that mean right because i mean i just did a podcast with like one of the world's leading uh estrogen people and, and they were telling me like about what's happening again and, and, and again i don't want to make this like mm, a transhumanist yeah, podcast, yeah, yeah. But, i mean look it's obvious that we, because of modernization, this is not Orwellian or aliens or anything. This yeah. is literally modernization. Modernization has now put so many chemicals and so many endocrine disruptors and so many phthalates and BPA and plastics and, and, and you know, phytoestrogens, all these different yeah. things that males and females, because that's what there only is, yeah. in utero are being damaged hormonally. And so people are coming out damaged hormonally. Again, I don't want to get into an argument about this, that, and the other, but you're coming out damaged or ho hormonally because you had a lack of testosterone or a lack of estrogen or a lack of whatever hormone in utero. And this is why you're seeing what you're seeing. And so again, young military male ages now of testosterone levels are mm, so good. low. That's true. It's interesting. You're right. If you, but if you compare that to 50 to 70 years ago, you're, yeah. I mean, yeah. the smart people already tell me this, it's one third. Yeah. This yeah. is all modernization. So again, yeah. getting back to what we were really talking about, which is to get optimized as an aging male or female in today's day and age, you have to have a physician that understands that you got to work outside of the lab ranges and they also have to be very tactile or oh, tactical wow. in understanding that like, this is what I have to do with my patients or right. my patients aren't going to feel better. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. I always, when I was coaching, I don't coach anymore, but when I was a health coach, I always said to clients, think of a time when you felt amazing. Yeah. Whatever age that was, whatever right. experience and feeling you had, that is how you should feel now. Right. There is no reason why you should right. not feel that way. Absolutely if true. you don't, we need to overcome what's holding you back. 
And one of the reference ranges that I am most outraged about is uh, for thyroid hormone. Yeah. In particular, in the UK, it drives me up the wall. Oh, it's the same in the States, though. I mean, is it? It's just oh, it's bad. so bad. I just, it's a absolute tragedy when I meet women who are, um, who are not given enough thyroid hormone, but they're given just enough that they conceive a baby and then they lose the baby at five months. And at that point, you have to you have to deliver the baby vaginally. Your milk comes in. You are completely traumatized. Yeah. And this is, uh, like I said, is it's a complete tragedy and it's un it's avoidable. But the reason the reason why the body aborts is because the mother is completely responsible for thyroid hormone for the baby. Right. And uh, right. if the baby does not get enough thyroid hormone. It has developmental, neuro, neuro, neurological totally. developmental delays. And so the body says, this is not viable. This child is not viable. That's right. Which is, which is terrible. I mean, mothers, I see a lot of moms who've just delivered, who complain about brain fog, their hair yeah. is falling out, they're exhausted, yeah. they're right. gaining weight. And they're, in my opinion, there are two reasons why this happens. One is because their thyroid hormones are not back in balance, and the That's other right. is that their spermidine levels are not back where they should be because breast milk, if they're breastfeeding, they give it's full of spermidine, spermine, these polyamines, which are needed for cell growth. Yep. And guess what? It's also needed for your hair, and it's needed for hair pigmentation too, <clears throat> which is why at age what almost 59, I don't have to dye my hair. That's awesome. But, yeah. but for these women who've just given birth, they, you know, they don't understand what's happening. And it's because they've just given all of this thyroid hormone and all of this spermidine and spermine to their babies. So they need to build that back up. <clears throat> but the doctors, first most doctors don't know anything about spermidine. No when it comes yeah. to thyroid hormone, not all women can actually convert levothyroxine. T4 into right. the bioavailable thyroid hormone T3. Right. And that is unproblematic because our cells have every cell in the body has a receptor for T3, not T4. So if we can't convert, and I happen to be a very poor converter, uh, and you can do a genetic test for that. Yeah. If you were a poor converter like me who has, uh, I'm homozygous for this DIO2 gene, DIO2 gene then I, you're not going to do well on levothyrox and you need desiccated thyroid. Right, well, so, so. so I want to unpack this with you because I've never <laughs> talked about this in the, at the level that you're talking about, but I've been a big pr supporter because I saw this with my mom. My mom gave birth to nine children. Yeah. Actually 10, actually 10 but the, the, the first one, my older brother, who is Christopher J, I'm J. Christopher, died of SIDS, which oh. I can become the Avenger and talk about how that was really actually a V-related deal. But the end of the day is, um, it's true. And again, if you've ever read that book, Stop the Thyroid Madness, which I'm sure you Yes, have. I love that book. I love that book. That's so the best I read book, book ever. Yes. I read that book 13 years ago. And I've been yes. telling women ever since then that almost every woman who has two babies or more has damaged thyroid. Yep. And again, it's for yep. all the reasons that you just said. Yep. And- because again, there's a massive misunderstanding or a lack of awareness in the, the physician uh, community, especially in the insurance subrogated doctors, which mm -hmm. is which most people right. go to, um, you know, about this, that women never recover metabolism. Mm -hmm. yeah. It leads, it leads to obviously a breakdown, you know, second and third order of obviously other effects, like you were saying, you know, that now you've got the fat gain, visceral yeah. body fat deposition inflammation levels and then it gets the sexual functioning oh yeah. yeah and then the husband and wife are usually ended up in a divorce or a breakup or you know so and so's cheating yep. on so and so but all this stuff you're right can literally be solved by knowledge desiccated thyroid increasing spermidine levels yeah. you know all the things yeah. that you and i talk about on a day-to-day -day yep. level but it's yep. mind-blowing to see how many women are never given desiccated spermidine they're always giving t4 t4 T4, and, right. and then they destroy Inverted. their thyroid. They, they destroy their thyroid. Yeah, yeah. So that's synthetic T4. Um, there are a few people who are able to convert it, but like I said, there are so many small numbers people yeah. who cannot convert right. it. Selenium, right. taking selenium will help with the conversion. 
Um, but for example, in the United Kingdom, in Australia, our soil has no selenium. So if you eat local, if you eat grass-fed beef and you think you're getting everything, guess what? You're not getting selenium. And you need that for thyroid health, for that conversion of T4 to T3. So that's why I take desiccated pig's thyroid, which yeah. is essentially a food. You know, I've you been taking that... desiccated thyroid for 20 years. Monica has Woo-hoo! been taking it for 10 years. Amazing. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, when you really start looking, and by the way, and I could name names, but a lot of the influencers in our space don't understand T1, T2, T2 and T3, and T4. They're always yeah. talking about T3 and T4. Yeah, they don't know the like, role of T2, for instance. Yeah. T- yeah, there's even no. a T zero. People, yeah, people T0 don't know. Too, that's right. Yeah, people don't know this. I know. And, and that Crazy. that's the thing is why I like, and it goes the same with spermidine. It's why I like to take it from food because then you get these other polyamines that co-occur right. with the spermidine, which that we need to learn more about them. But for instance, spermine, which is another polyamine. Polyamine just means it's made from amino acids like collagen. Right. So nobody should be afraid of it. You know, collagen right. is amino acid. Right. Um, spermine is actually there for DNA methylation. So it helps turn good genes on, bad genes off. Right. Putrescine, terrible name. If I could go back a hundred, few hundred years and rename this, I would. But putrescine is the precursor. It's sort of like the raw thyroid hormone, like the T4. And that can be made into spermidine, which can then be made into spermine. And the body decides, the body has this raw, you know, this sort of store cupboard of, say, putrescine. And then it sort of has to decide, what do I want to make today? What, does, what do I need? What do the different parts of my body need to, to, uh, to function optimally? And if you give all three of these together, I think you get really great results. And I think yeah. that's why... Clinically, we get such nice results as well. And why in our mouse studies, we had such nice results in Japan as well. So let's talk about spermidine because I told you I was going to unpack this a lot. So obviously, when we and I were talking off air, um, I've been using spermidine since our friend um, Sandra you know, told me about it back in 2020. It was actually, I think, 2020 when I read yeah. her book. And then 2021, I finally got her on the podcast. But um, And then, you know, Pfizer and and some other things that she was mentioning, but obviously I was not taking the correct brand. You know, I was getting it <laughs> off of Amazon. Yeah. You know, I but I want you to break this down because obviously I work with, you know, BioStack Labs and you know, I respect those guys. You know, they're building and, and creating and, and and compounding or not compounding, but formulating really good supplements. But I want to have someone like you, you know, who's truly an expert on this, like really break down the difference between the synthetic version of spermidine and of course the organic or natural sure. version that you guys have in your supplement. Because I think I think that a lot of people in our space call it biohacking or wellness or whatever we are, um, understand the, net, the the importance of using spermidine. But I really do think that there's a, a huge gulf in the understanding of between the versions because there's a lot of versions. Yeah. So there's there is synthetic and you can see if it's synthetic, it'll say uh, either just plain spermidine or it will say spermidine HCl hydrochloride or spermidine THCl tetrahydrochloride. These are the synthetic versions. So synthetic just means a two-dimensional molecular mimic. And when I try to explain this to people, I say, imagine, you know, um, leather driving gloves and you have a left hand glove and you have a right hand glove. And if you put your hands together like this with those gloves on, you have a perfect fit, right? It's yeah. exactly a two-dimensional molecular mimic just like this. Yeah. And yet, if I take the glove off of this hand and I try and put it on this hand, it's not going to fit. Right. If it's right. And so it's not exactly perfect. It's close, but it's not exactly perfect. Now, the way that the body, because the body manufactures spermidine in our tissues, we manufacture it in our gut biome, and then we get it from food, primarily plants. It's probably it's one of the reasons why the longevity uh, blue zones, all these people eat loads of spermidine in their right. diet with lots of plant material, among other things. Um, you get it from those three sources. And it is plant sources are not a two-dimensional molecular mimic. They are three-dimensional. Perfect. They are, they are the real deal, right? Right. And it's also, it comes with these co-occurring polyamines. Just like I was saying, you know, we were talking about thyroid hormone and you have all of these other 
co-occurring hormones in desiccated thyroid, T1 up to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, all together, well, these polyamines come together. They're packaged together in nature. So usually you have it with spermine and putrescine. Sometimes you have it just with putrescine. And if you just have it synthetic on its own, if you take too much, there was a study that came out last year, I think it was in October, in Nature Aging, which is a sub-journal of the main nature scientific journal that said that the dose is an issue. If you yeah. take too much synthetic, then you can impair, in this particular study, it was fertility. So then the question is, what is the correct dose? And I know you will have heard that saying, the poison is in the dose, right? right? Right. The difference between a pill and a poison is the dosage, exactly. Exactly. So what is the correct dose in humans? And that is that therein lies the problem because we have not studied synthetic spermidine in humans yet. We yeah. do not know what the safety or efficacy is, what that dose is. And we also don't know what the difference is for, say, the, the genders, right? There's a big difference in men and women, how we metabolize things. Uh, what about the receptors we have for these things? And what about differences in gut biome? Because in order to convert spermidine into spermine, you need a different enzyme. Does your gut yeah. have it, right? Yeah. So there, there are questions like that. What about your liver? Is your liver able to clear this? Because too much spermidine converts into acrylene. So I don't know if you're from Ohio. You're a you're a Buckeye. <laughs> I think we had to bring this up. You're a Buckeye, but you know that you know that train derailment that happened in yeah with Ohio. all the toxic fumes that yes. that basically destroyed and transmogrified half the genomes in that area. Yeah. So it was it was um it was from acrolein. That was acrolein is what that toxin was. If you have um, too much spermidine, the body converts it to acrolein. Now that that's not good for us. But in no. a particular instance, it becomes less bad for us. And the body is constantly making decisions like, okay, this is not good. How do I make it into something less bad? And right. it will make it into something less bad, but it doesn't mean that chronic exposure to that is a good thing, right? So again, you know, we don't know how quickly each person's liver gets rid of it, metabolizes it. We don't know about genetic differences yeah. that mean it's it's metabolized differently. And so that's why using a food-derived source is safer because it has been in the food supply for, for millennia. Even if there's a safety study that's done, most safety studies last about three months. Yeah. So how do you know if you're chronically ingesting this synthetic substance, if it's actually good for you or not, until we get those you know, yellow those sort of uh, yellow flags, we have no idea if something is is not good. So that's, you know, I think maybe because of my experience with um, synthetic versus natural desiccated thyroid, yeah. I've gone down the, you know, let's take the food derived version. It's yeah. a lot more expensive. The well, synthetic me, well, is I know pennies. That, but I, I do want to, I, I want you to go deeper though, because like, again, I, you know, there's very advanced people that watch yeah, my stuff. So sure. it's like the, the reality is, is like, is there too high of a dose of yours? Like, again, we live in the supersized mentality of the world, right? Like where people yep. think if one milligram is good, then three milligrams. I know, I know. Better. And especially in the biohacking world, yeah. because I'm very much quality over quantity. Um, in the biohacking world, I find a lot of the tech bros can be quantity over quality. And um, <laughs> sorry, tech bros. Sorry, I went to Real Berkeley. I, I went to class with you. Lunch, though, thank people. God, is yeah. all transhumanists anyway? Well, I mean, well, <laughs> I mean, no, no, no disrespect. I mean, I, I I sat in classes with some of these guys, and um, you know, when Bill Joy was starting up Sun. Uh, microsystems, he asked my cousin, oh, could you come and join my company? We need a receptionist. He's like, oh, I'm so busy. I can't do it. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> but, oh, well. Yeah. So, so tech bros, no disrespect. It is, I think that they like to, they're looking for cost benefit analysis. What's the cost for this <laughs> per, per milligram per kilo? Um, you know, and no, I scale it in a week. Yeah. <laughs> but, but the, the, th the thing is, is that um, with food-derived spermidine, 
there's only one regulatory body in the world that has actually looked at this carefully, has looked at the science and has said this is there is a high dose here. And the upper limit right now that the European uh, Food Safety Authority has set is six milligrams per day of food derived spermidine. Right. Now, that may go up later, but what we know right now is that they are not confident going higher. So I correct see- me if I'm wrong, that would be literally 18 capsules of yeah. your product. Yeah. And, you know, we have it in a powder. You can get it as a powder. And if you yeah, open no, I it- understand. But do you have some of your people taking, say, six capsules and nine capsules a day? Because I've only been taking three. Yeah. I mean, some some people do. Some people yeah. do. I actually yeah. have uh, a woman in actually in, in Redwood City and she does six. She does six milligrams yeah. a day in her smoothie because she wants it to reverse her gray hair. And well, she so has largely so like, done that. Well, so let's talk about that. So like, because obviously if I'm going to start promoting this product, you know, there's going to be some of those people that are going to be like, hey, dude, I, you know, my hair issue, strength the tensile, you know, fiber strength, improving the follicle, blah, blah, blah. But, um, and my hair is dark too. And I'm, I, I would assume that it's, Part of the angiogenic peptide stack that I use because that has a that there's an effect of that and probably I have been taking spermidine whether it's mm-hmm. synthetic or not yeah you know for a while so there's probably some benefit to that but like yeah. is there a level of and again maybe you don't even know but like if and when not if but when I start promoting this like do we want to say like hey six milligrams has been shown or or you know experientially to strengthen the hair follicle or to improve you know the strength of our nails or, you know, all the different things that, that it does. I mean, is there, do we have anything to like, you know, concert? Yeah, we have, we have a lot of clinical feedback. Okay. The problem is, is that it's different for everyone because sure. people are depleted yeah. to different levels. Again, you know, uh, a mother who has given birth to nine children is yeah. going to be vastly more depleted than say a man who is under a lot of stress, right? Yeah. Or yeah. who may have that high uh, conversion of testosterone to DHT, yeah. right? right? This isn't a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor, right? but it does help with the DHT, keeping that lower. And that yeah. that is one of the mechanisms yeah. of action. But with spermidine, we know that after six days exposure to spermidine, the hair follicle, something like 20, I'm going to say it's 23, 25% of the hair follicles that are in the uh, shedding phase. So yeah. they're getting ready to, ready to fall out. Yeah. They actually move back. They move over the catagen or resting phase back into the antigen or growth phase. Right. And the antigen phase or growth phase is the only time when pigment production occurs. So you know, I can't say that everyone who takes spermidine or primidine is going to uh, have their hair color reverse. I mean, I showed you that photo oh. before of this 79-year-old, uh, yeah. you know, who had yep. the kind of weird windy bed with the hair color coming back in at the roots. I can't say that that will happen for everybody. But what I can yeah. tell you is that if you want your hair color to come back, your hair follicles must be in the growth phase, in the yeah. antigen. And I yeah. know and studies prove and support this, that spermidine will put your hair follicles into the antigen phase. So we know that even after as little as six days, that will start to happen. Then getting the pigment going, that's then the next question. So spermidine also has an interesting effect on melanin production. Yeah. So there have been studies done on uh, individuals with vitiligo. And some scientists have said, have written in their papers that they thought spermidine would be an interesting molecule to study in relation to reversing vitiligo. And we've had yeah. people, um, I don't know if you know Nadine Artemis from Living Libations I don't think uh, so. up in Canada. So she's sort of the, the beauty and skin whisperer. And um, she had a, a kind of melasma on her leg uh, that she said she'd had it for 20 years and it just went when she was on this. So there is more evenness to, um, you know, as we get older, we have more discoloration. And so that tends to even out. Um, It kind of reminds me of glutathione's mechanism of action where, you know, if you're taking glutathione, which is another antioxidant that I love, then, you know, you get more even pigmentation and you get, um, you have more chance of getting uh, hair color back as well. Do you like glutathione orally supplemented? Uh, liposomal. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. So but only, how do you compare only like the to like a, a an IV. Yeah, that's an interesting question. I suppose because if you want to do it on a regular basis, it's very hard to do IV. It would be very expensive. I mean, I would literally need Sandy Kaufman, um, although she's a dear right. friend and, and one of my medical advisors. I would need to have her, yeah, I understand. you know, around every yeah. single day and say, "Sandy, do this favor for me." But it is so. pretty amazing to look at glutathione, like you know, because obviously it's always included in recovery stacks and, you know, they have all these companies. Yeah. I mean, they have all these companies that travel all around to the party capital. Oh yeah. 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 And then they come in and they give them a massive IV push of glutathione and B and all these other things and they get them right back. But, um, you know, I knew about glutathione 15 years ago and, you know, in the performance community that I existed in, I, you know, I always tell people I've been using peptides since 2004. People don't even know what peptides wow. are, right? Like wow. the medical community yeah. starts using peptides in 2017 yeah. and 18, but it's like, it's underground. And that was the world that I lived in when yeah. you know, I was learning about hormones. There weren't books. There wasn't anything. You had to yeah. go out there and, you know, be an OG biohacker. But, you know, we were using glutathione in addition to peptides. And, you know, everybody that used glutathione knew that like, hey man, if you took, if you did a cocktail of glutathione once a month, you could get sick. Yeah. Just you wouldn't get sick now, oh. you know, and, and again, these are people using all sorts of shit, right? I mean, for me, I never ever did anything more than therapeutic dose, and that's why I think I've been able to do what I've done and learn, and never ever, you know, f myself up. But you know, a lot of people are again always doing too high. Yeah, again, the whole if some is good, more is better, right? Every always, everyone wants that, right? It's... Start low and go slow, and I was always measured, yep. you know, by really smart people, but. I don't know. Um, there's a lot. There's a lot of stuff. I think still, you know, in this space that we're in right now on a lot of these newer, you know, very cutting edge, you know, mitochondrial optimizers, you know, age regression products. It, it goes back to the very beginning of this podcast. You know, we're in the infancy of the golden age. Yeah. So again, where do you place your consciousness? You know, is your consciousness in abundance? Like, wow, you know, give me more. Tell me more. Mm, How do I yeah. learn more about this? Yeah. Or are you in the you know, dissonant frequency yeah. of like lack, limitation, and scarcity. But there's yeah. there's so much. Else. I guess the last thing I want to ask you for is like for a 45 year old man or woman. You know, the average person probably watching my podcast again, successful six figure income or who's listening to this and it's like, wow, Jay and Leslie are going deep on all this stuff. How do I take spermidine to optimize my health? Like, what is the dosage level that I should be using on a day in day out basis? Right. Okay. So what I would say is that it's a little bit like magnesium, you know, yeah. where we all know if you take magnesium, the body will tell you when you've had too much. And because <laughs> <laughs> you will run to the toilet. Exactly. Right. The same with, with medium chain triglycerides, right? We all know. And it will be the same with spermidine too. You will you will notice. Now it's not necessarily going to manifest that way, but you might you might bloat you might notice some bloating. Another thing that can happen is because it does have an impact on two of the eight clock genes. If you take too much, you might, and say you do it before bed, you might wake up yeah. and have a little bit of a headache that's akin to a melatonin hangover headache. Yeah. Or when you take too much melatonin, it's like, oh, I feel like I've got some cotton wool in my head. And so that will be one way that you, that you will know. So you can titrate up capsule by capsule, which is then a, a third, you know, basically sure. 300, sure. 0.33 milligrams. Um, and we've got, we have it in a powder patch, so you can just add it to your smoothies, shakes, your acai bowls. What does it taste porridge. like? It's good. It tastes like, um, some people say it tastes like dried milk powder. Other people, I think it tastes very nutty and slightly sweet. And um, it's- So you can throw it in protein shakes. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's what, you know, this uh, person up in Redwood City who's reversed their gray hair, they, that's what she was doing was she was just, she was opening up literally 18 capsules. She was the one who was like, please make a powder because I just want to put in, yeah. right? Yeah. It'll be so much easier. So the taste is fine. But, you know, yes, at age 45, we are then looking ahead and thinking, right, um, the next half of my life, the next 45, 55 years, because many of us will live to age 100 now. But yeah. in what condition will we live? Well, you need to slow the pace at which you age to avoid the diseases of aging, whether that's right. cancer, cardiovascular disease, neurodegenerative disease, autoimmunity, diabetes, 
slow the age at which uh, slow the pace at which you age, and spermidine is one, is the molecule that actually hits minimum nine out of twelve of the hallmarks of aging, whether that's telomere shortening, mitochondrial dysfunction, stem cell dysfunction, inflammation, uh, impaired protein folding, impaired autophagy. You know, I could go on, but there is and there is evidence that it actually hits all twelve of the hallmarks of aging. And the interesting thing with cell senescence, you know, you look at fisetin, you look at a lot of these molecules that actually get rid of senescent cells. Remember when I told you about the cardiac cells, how they're like vintage cars that we've got to constantly maintain? Yep. Well, do you want to clear your limited number of cardiac cells or do you want to keep them? And what spermidine does that is different from these other senolytics is it doesn't clear them, it rejuvenates them. And that, I think, is a very important distinction. And it's what it does to the immune system. It rejuvenates elderly immune cells. And that work has come out of the University of Oxford, done by two of my scientific advisors, Professor Katja Simon and Dr. Gada Al-Saleh. So before I let you go, I want to share, share the screen. Um, you did mention, which we should mention because we got into it deeper earlier in hormone stuff, but like, yeah. how, does it, how does it help with hormonal? So there was a study out of Canada. They were giving wheat germ derived spermidine. So bear in mind that uh, again, when you're getting it from food, you're going to have these other co-occurring polyamines. So that also had spermine and putrescine. They gave that to men and women uh, for 30 days only. And that study is by Richard Vendera and Leanna Wilson, the regulatory effect of biogenic polyamine, spermine and spermidine in men and women. And basically they saw reductions in cortisol among 83% of male participants and 37% of female participants. There was an average 3.3 pounds of weight loss during the first 30 days of supplementation without any dietary metabolic intervention. DHEA increased in the female participants. In the male participants, they had a significant um, increase of DHEA as well. These are precursors to uh, the male and female sex hormones. 100% um, of men had a decrease of progesterone at 30 days, while 75% of women in the follicular phase experienced both an increase in estradiol and a significant increase in progesterone. The reason why it's important to have that increase in progesterone is because cortisol is made from progesterone. And women who are at age 45, generally you've got teenagers who are, you know, very surly, and you've got your elderly parents and you're holding down a job and you're, you know, you're moving up in management, you have all of these demands, right? And so your cortisol is going to be skyrocketing, but yeah. it's robbing Peter to pay Paul. It's going to be taking all of your progesterone to make that cortisol at exactly the moment that your progesterone is plummeting because you're about to, as a woman, you're about to go into perimenopause. Right. So it's, it's terrible. So that's why spermidine is so interesting on the hormonal front. Now, that study also talks about women who have um, urinary incontinence. And this was something that I I had missed to begin with, but we started to have clients say, you know, has anybody else said that they don't have to get up to go to the bathroom in the night? Has anybody yeah. else said that they're making it to, you know, the front door of their house really? without having any leakage or something? And this yeah. is a big problem for women, especially after you have multiple children. Yeah, no, we understand. I understand. And, uh, and that that actually improved in two thirds of the participants in that study. So it's, um, you know, we, we want the sex hormones to be optimized, yeah. um, both for health, but also, you know, for libido, for, you know, for marital intimacy, right? Yeah. And yeah. clearly you don't want to have to be running off to the, uh, to the ladies' room all the time, either. That's where right, interrupts I wish, everything. I wish it would help with BPA. I mean, you know, as a, almost every fifty-plus-year-old man or aging older, you know, has BPA. I mean, it's just what happens. It's the prostate is increasing in size and it's narrowing the, you know, all the uh, machinery and connective um, tissue down there. And so, spermine is very important for prostate health. And I'd have okay. to send you the study links, but it's interesting in. In older women, you need both spermine and spermidine to help with uh, with bone huh. um, to inhibit catabolism or breakdown of bone and in increase anabolic 
you know, growth of sure. bone. And in men, you need both of them for prostate health. But I'll send you that study later. So, how do you, so, so, so do you guys, you guys don't sell spermine in isolation? It comes in, no, not in isolation. It comes together with, yeah. um, you know, it comes together with the, with the spermidine. Yeah. Um, the issue when you take it from nature is that if you have to then, um, you have to guarantee the exact amount of both um, both of these polyamines because it varies from batch to batch as it occurs yeah. in nature. It's yeah. it's a little bit difficult, but you know we were most interested in spermidine. <clears throat> now we're looking at the spermine, and we know it's already in there. Um, we know that people who take the synthetic say they don't get the same results as they get on ours, and that is one of the reasons we think that may be the difference. But the other thing is that we've got a prebiotic in ours, and that prebiotic feeds the bacteria and the gut biome that can make spermidine for you. And right. I've always felt, you know, especially as a patient, why not leverage everything that our bodies are capable of? If there's a little pharmacy in there that works just for us and knows exactly what molecules we need to stay happy and healthy, we need to we need to nourish that and feed it. So these prebiotics, uh, fructooligosaccharides, are selectively taken up by the strains of bacteria that love to make spermidine. So that's you know, pretty think, awesome. Yeah. So that's the idea. Plus, the other thing is that you know you kind of can't beat Mother Nature, and if you look at breast milk. Breast milk is full of these polyamines, all three, and fructooligosaccharides, which are Very there cool. to, to nourish basically the the gut biome that the mother has just given to the baby as it passes through the birth canal. Leslie, you've been amazing on this podcast. So guys and gals, uh, as always, please support the amazing folks that come on the Jay Campbell podcast. So her website is Oxford Healthspan. Dot com and I'm scrolling through here. I see Natalie and I don't see Jay Campbell. So I'm <laughs> you need to be. You probably see place of like, Dr. Ali Subiar. Here, but, there's uh, Dr. Sandra Calvin. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, thank you so much for coming on here today. Let me also share your um your IG. Your yes, IG. My Leslie, IG. Yeah. Leslie new, Leslie's new prime. That's right. For the new prime of life. And I think we've got a code for you, which is J15 for 15%. It's J15. Okay. Off. Awesome. Great. I'm, yeah. I, I was going to ask yeah. you for that. I should have done that at the beginning of the show, but that, that's perfect because that's either JC or J15. So you guys uh, use that code JC or J15 and you get obviously 15% off your purchase, correct? Yep. Absolutely. Okay. That's awesome. And then I'll get, I'll put that in the show notes. So again, please support, go to her website, oxfordhealthspan.com, follow her on IG. And of course, remember, Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon.